The third pearl is very important where you need to really avoid the air bubbles. The insertion process of a trial lens, very important because at first instance, you as a practitioner going to insert the first scleral lens in patient's eye. Patient doesn't know what it feels. Okay, so you need to really counsel him well, show the lens in his hand, in his or her hand. Tell them even though it looks really big, no need to worry because the edges of the lens is going to rest on the white insensitive part of a sclera. Where even if we touch, we have relative, uh, very less sensitive uh, kind of a feeling. So looking at the size doesn't get, uh, don't get scared and you, you're going to insert that lens. Even while inserting, you need to make sure that patient is remain comfortable and your continuous counseling is going to be there. Always tell the patient that just listen to my voice and follow the steps so that the practitioner will have a comfortable insertion process. How you insert and the way you insert and after insertion, the position of muscular lens makes a real huge difference of the confidence in patient's mind. Because the moment you insert the lens and if you find the air bubble, of course, we need to remove that lens. Second attempt, even if you find the bubble, you need to remove and go for the third attempt. The number of attempt you take inserting the first trial lens makes a real difference in patient's confidence. If you could able to insert the lens in the first instance without having any air bubble, unless and until there are certain different clinical conditions in eye, which is actually causing the elevation of the haptic and then you know, getting the air bubble in because of the simple effort in Stephen Johnson syndrome and all those things. Of course, all these things Ideally, a practitioner should note in a baseline examination and choose the diameter really wisely so that the air bubble uh, episode will not come when you insert the first trial lens. So if you choose the diameter and the vault and the other parameter wisely in the first trial lens, and if you could insert the first lens without an air bubble, you're almost won the battle there and there itself. So make sure in the first instance, no air bubble, and you're done. So follow the thorough clinical procedure for insertion. Uh, you all know that ask the patient to look down, make sure their chin should tuck to the chest completely, widespread of the lids, uh, insert from the bottom uh, portion of the lens at the lower uh, eyelid, and then ask the patient to look down and push it from the top. The insertion removal process from the practitioner's point is very common. Most of us are already aware about it. In case if we feel bubble, make sure you remove and reinsert and make sure that at least in the second attempt, there should not be a bubble. In spite of in repetitive the procedure, if you still find bubble, then you need to again go back and check the evaluation of the complete uh, ocular adnista to make sure whether your diameter is right or wrong, or you need to really decrease or increase the diameter if patient has any kind of a uh, simplifron or uh, tinguicula or the trap or any kind of uh, structure which is actually obstructing the haptic to rest on the uh, underlying sclera.